Hi, my name's Jonathan Hicks. We're back at the Dice Cup this evening, and I'm joined by Andy. Hey, <laughs> Bob. Mark. Michael. And we've just finished playing Colt Express. Now this is a light filler really, I think it's supposed to be. You have this locomotive in the middle here, and most of the players are bandits running up and down the train, trying to steal money, you have all these money bags here, from all the hapless passengers who are on the train. But the marshal, the guy with the star here, is also running around, and he has a few objectives, and he was the marshal in this one, so he might be trying to capture certain bandits, you can stick them in the prison at the back here, or he might be trying to... Uh, what else did you have to do, Andy, in terms of objectives? Use all these um, Capture people, oh, shoot, shoot, people. shoot bullets, get a game mail mags. Okay, so all right. Business. So for most people, though, um, they're just trying to run around getting cash. And the way you do that is you draw a hand of cards, and most of these cards will do something. So this lets me move, this lets me steal money. These two are bullets. If you get shot by somebody else, because you can shoot people, then they go in your deck, and then when you draw your hand of cards, they kind of clog up your deck. So you can't do anything with that, so that's annoying because I've been shot a couple of times. But being shot isn't bad other than that. So then you actually play the game by choosing one of these cards, maybe I'm going to choose to move if I'm the first player, and I would put it in a pile here, and then the next player sticks a card in. Thanks, so they're going to, the marshal's going to try and capture who's ever in, in their uh, carriage, and then the next player, and we keep putting these things in. They don't happen yet, we just stick them in the middle, and then once everyone's put the cards in, you turn them over. I should say you usually get, we go around a few rounds, you're going to get a lot of cards in here, and then they're all resolved one at a time. So then I would decide which way I was going to move. Now it's white, so I was in here. The one thing I will say about this game is a little bit fiddly trying to get the old meeples out here. But I could move to the next carriage into here. And then you draw the next card. And then the marshal captures whoever's next to him. So this guy would go to jail. And then you do the next card. And you keep working through all the different things. But people could move in different directions. You can punch people, which means they drop some of their loot and they get knocked into the next carriage. You can shoot people, but only the people in the adjacent carriage. You can't shoot people in your own carriage. If you're on the top and you shoot, though, you can shoot anyone all the way along either end of the train. Uh, so you resolve them. And the tricky thing is trying to remember what other people have played and think, OK, he was doing this. I think he's going to go here. And then he was going to steal money. So what do I need to do? Uh, and that's kind of where the interest comes. There's a few uh, special abilities and things. Each player has a character ability which is different. And the marshal is generally ruining everybody's plans by going around and arresting people. Um, but you, at the end of the day, unless the marshal completes all his objectives, then whoever has collected the most loot is the winner. All right, thoughts, Andy? Um, yeah, quite, it's a good game. It's, uh, quite, it's old classic as a filler. It's more of a sort of light, lightweight game. It's a bit, bit heavier than a filler. Um, but the expansion gives you the marshal, the player control of the marshal. The base game does not have that. This is the marshal and prisoners expansion. Yeah. yeah, the base game doesn't have that. The marshal's controlled by every player and does slightly different things. Yeah, I think it's quite a nice fun game. The marshal gives it gives it a slightly new dynamic of the marshals trying to win over everybody else by completing four objectives where everybody else is trying to win by money. Um, yeah. Okay. D? I've played it twice, once on the base game and once with the expansion. I'd say the base game I would describe as a filler. I think with the expansion it goes a little bit beyond that. The expansion does add a little bit more gameplay to it. So I quite like it particularly with the expansion. I think I'd give it about a 7 out of 10 overall with the expansion. Okay. Yeah, I liked it. Um, the expansion definitely helps. Um, it's good to play with it. The only downside is it can take a long time to explain the rules at the start. So you've got a new player, suddenly it becomes not a filler, it becomes a light game because you've got 15, 20 minutes of explaining it. Once everybody knows how to play, it's really quick. And you can actually go quite, you know, it is almost like a filler. We always play with maybe a few many players at seven. Four, five is probably a better number. But uh, yeah, good game. Okay, Mark? Yeah, it's, it's a programming game. So if you like programming games, this is probably one of the better ones. Um, yeah, I mean, it says on the side of the box, I everybody's mean, saying it says 40 minutes. Realistically, if you've got people who you know playing it, maybe five players, you'll probably get it done in an hour. If you, or probably, you might be able to hit the 40 minute time, but yeah, it can go on. That's that's the, the risk you take, certainly with the explanations of it can. If people take a little bit of time or start, the problem with it being sort of like people can't end up chatting a bit while playing it, and then it can be a bit of downtime where you're waiting for people to play their cards. 
But yeah, it, if you like program games, this is one to look at. I'm not a huge fan of program games, but I don't like lots of like Richard's robots. But this is this is certainly playable. Okay, Michael. Okay, so this is the first time playing this game. I really liked it. I thought it was great fun. I thought it was a fun game. I agree. Some of the mechanics are a little fiddly, but it's a good game. You can be incredibly petty. It's one of those games in which you can play your cards in an incredibly petty way, and I really enjoyed that. So I enjoyed it. Rating out of ten. Um, I'm, I'll go with an eight actually. I thought it was fun. Okay, Mark. I think for me it's about six to six and a half. It's decent, but yeah. Okay. Avon? Uh, I'll give it a 7. One thing I would add, which we missed, when you're actually playing the cards in, sometimes you're in a tunnel and they actually face down, and so you don't always know exactly what's going to happen. Alright. Dean, you said 7, I'd give it a 7. I, I, I disagree with Avon, actually. I, I think it's better with sort of like about 6 or 7 players. I think with a smaller number of players, there's a bit more sort of almost randomness and luck gets into it. There's the nobody next to you to shoot sort of thing. When there's that many people on the train, you're going to shoot somebody. Okay. And yeah, I'd probably give this about eight cacti out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I really liked it. Um, it is quite random. Don't go in this with a sort of heavy strategy mentality. You never really know quite what's going to happen. Even if you try and plan it out to your best of your ability, thing, unexpected things can happen. As A-Bomb says, with the face down cards at that point, you've really got no idea. Um, but the theme's great, really enjoyed the theme. I really like the little cacti that they give you that serve no purpose at all, just to decorate your table. Um, so lots to like really in this game. Uh, I'd be on 7.5 out of 10 I think. Alright, thanks for watching, that was Cult Express. <laughs>